interrupting. So I just have to be the one to not try to cuss during the, the class and we'll be we'll be okay. So So we are now live. So let's take a look at where we are today. So today we're going to talk about projectile motion. So this is just a parabola equation, but really it's a concept that comes from physics. Okay, so it's a special equation that we model projectile motion. So something goes up and then something comes down. So if you were to trace that, that's the path of a parabola. So all of this is going to model after this particular equation. Now this is the equation of something goes up, something comes down, or if I throw something down. Now if you think of Angry Birds, you know, you know, you you're shooting something this way, right? It makes a difference as to do I shoot it this high, this low, you know, something like that. So that angle makes a difference. So it gets a little bit more complicated if I'm shooting something off in a distance, okay, because the angle does make a difference. But here we're not going to get into that. We're just saying what goes up must come down. So assuming all these problems, I'm either sending it up and it's coming down or I'm sending it down, okay? So I'm not doing anything angular for this. So we have a formula, h of t, the height of this object is represented by negative one-half gt squared plus v zero. That's just a fancy way of denoting the constant, plus h zero. What you'll find in physics and other scientific application, the sub-zero just means initial, okay? So h is my height, t is the time, and in all of our models, we're gonna be in time in terms of seconds. G is the force of gravity. Gravity is a force that wants to pull something where? Down, okay? V sub zero is the initial velocity. H zero is the initial height. So if I've got this pencil, you know, it makes a difference if I throw it up that tall and then Egypt gives it back to me. So that makes a difference to just throwing it like this, okay? So the initial velocity makes a difference in its path and how long it stays up. And then the initial height. If I start here, it's going to be in the, in, the, in the air longer than if I start here, okay? So those all make a difference. So what you're going to see, you'll need to know the formula, but I will give you the constant that has to do with gravity. If our problem is in feet, gravity is a force that pulls at 32 feet per second. And if our problem is in meter, that's going to be 9.8 meters per second. Okay, well then you can... You want to come up here and do this? or no. You're good? Okay. So, and then think about initial velocity. This is just some common sense stuff. If, if the object is going up, my initial velocity is going to be positive. If I throw the object down, my initial velocity will be negative. If I do something like I roll a car off of a cliff, you know, if I roll this pin off of a desk, the initial velocity is zero. I'm not throwing it down. Okay? So... So when you read the problems, look for the problem to say something is projected upward, thrusted upward, it's thrown down, it rolls off of a cliff, it is dropped. What happens if I drop an object? Am I adding any force to it? No, I mean, like if I do this, the initial velocity was zero if I drop an object, okay? So it's only when I do something like this, that's when I gave it some extra velocity when I threw it down, okay? So those are just some basic, really elementary physics concepts for the problem that we're working. So let's look at this. And all of these are just going to be parabolas. And we're going to be asking for vertexes. And we're going to be asking for solving quadratic equations. Why to write a quadratic model for the height in seconds after the projectile is launched? So a projectile is fired upward, height of 600 feet, initial velocity of 803. Okay. Now what it may help, and I think is to draw a scenario first. So here's the object. How high is that object off the ground? It's what, 600? 600 feet. So I'm starting at 600 feet. Am I throwing the object up or down? Up, that's what, vertically upwards. So this object goes up, this object comes down. So there's no need to get fancy with the parabola and all of that. That's basically this diagram of what is happening, okay? so. Let's come up with the equation. I will, as many times as I can, write down this equation so that it gets in muscle memory. Minus one half gt squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial height, okay? 
So that's a parabola. That parabola opens what? Up or down? Down. We can see that. You know, the object goes up, the object comes down. So what is G in this case? If I'm in feet, G is going to be what? 32. Is 32 feet per second squared. Pardon me? You're given that. That's a constant of gravity. So if in all of these problems, in all of these problems, if I'm dealing with feet, G is going to be 32 feet per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. Okay. What's the initial velocity here? Yeah, 803 feet per second. And what's the initial height? 600 feet. Okay. So that means if I write out my specific equation, it's going to be h of t is minus 1 half times 32 t squared plus 803 t. plus 600. That negative 1 half times 32, I can write that more simply as what? How about negative 16 t squared plus 803 t plus 600. Okay. So that equation models this scenario. Okay. I can look at this. When I look at this equation, I know that this object was thrust upward at 803 feet per second, and it started out at 600. How do you get it starts out at 600? If what? It tells me, but what would I? What happens when I substitute t equals zero? What do I get? 600. So that means at time zero, before anything happens, how high is that object? 600 feet. That's my initial height. Okay, you can plug in t equals zero, and you get the initial height. Now, what do they ask me? Um, they're nothing yet. I scroll down. During what time interval will the projectile be more than 5,000 feet above the ground? Okay, so let's go back to our drawing. I started out at 600. Where is 5,000? It's up. Okay. Like I said, I don't care about the scale. You know, this is pretty much not to scale. So somewhere higher than 600. How many times do you think it's going to hit 5,000? About twice. It's going to hit it. It's going to hit it up on the way. Hit it on the way up if it goes that high, and hit it on the way down. Okay. So that means between this time and this time, there's an interval of time that it's going to be above 5,000. Okay. So how do I solve this then? What variable is equal to 5,000? It's the what? The, not t. It's h. It's the height. It's my y-axis, my y variable. So during what time will it be above 5,000? That means take the model that you have, negative 16 t squared plus 803 t plus 600 and just set it equal to 5,000. That means set the height equal to 5,000. So uh, this is my model for height. So h of t. If I just set it equal to 5,000 and solve for what? Which variable? What's well, the only variable? t. Solve for t. That would give me the time interval at which it's above 5,000. So how do I solve something like this? You can do it by hand with the quadratic formula. Anyone? Would you prefer that method or what? Calculator, okay. So I will come over to my calculator and let's just solve this. So how did I do this? It was what? Menu, algebra, polynomial, complex roots of a polynomial. So I'm trying to solve negative 16 t squared plus, what was it, 803? 803 t, and then plus 600. And now, let me just back up one thing before I do that. 
I don't like to solve things equal to 5,000. I like to solve things equal to zero. So let's write this as negative 16t squared plus 803t plus 600 minus 5,000 equal zero. So that's negative 16 t squared plus 803 t minus 4,400 equals zero, right? So that's what I want in my calculator. So plus 803 t, and then I'm going to write minus 4,400. In this command, it is assumed, it's assumed that you're setting that equal to zero. So you just do what? Comma t okay so negative 16 t squared plus 803 t minus 4400 check your numbers and i get an answer you may have your calculator already set to do approximate uh, if you don't then you can just control enter will give you the uh, approximation so that tells me what <clears throat> did i do something wrong So negative 16 t squared plus 803 t minus 4400. Let's see what you put in. Negative 16 t squared plus 803 t. Let's see. Negative 16 t squared plus 803 t. Minus 4,400. Let's just do this again. Menu. Algebra. Polynomial. 3. So negative 16. T squared. Plus 803. T. Minus 4,400 comma t I don't think that matters I'm trying to figure out I think you just got a negative sign there instead of the minus so I think I think you hit this the negative sign instead of the minus sign okay so same thing it's when you get up here this 4,400 is subtract 4,400, not minus 4,400. Wait, let's go back. Negative 16. I can't figure out what it's. Let's just enter it again. Menu. And just see if you're what you're doing that's different than me. 3. Complex. Negative 16. T squared. Plus 803. T minus 4400 comma t so i'm not sure there if one of the minus signs was off or something now how do we interpret this what does this mean you just write the numbers down and you're done no 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 no, no. so it means that this is the 6.26 6.26 and the other one is the what the 43 43.93 so in context of my problem that it is between 6. Point, what 26 so 6.26 okay okay let me see what's happening here there we go So it is above 5,000 feet. So it is above 5,000 feet between, what are those numbers? 6.26 and 43.93. So between 
6.26 and 43.93 seconds. So 6.26, 43.93. So that's the amount of time, that's the time interval at which this object is higher than 5,000 feet. Okay. How long will the projectile be in flight? It will be in flight until it hits what? The ground. What do we know about when it hits the ground? The height is zero. Okay. So all I'm asking for here is to set the height equal to zero. So when does the height equal zero? That's when it hits the ground. So it's negative 16 t squared plus 803 t plus 600 equals zero. When does that happen? Okay, I will go back to my calculator. And what you can do with your calculator, you can just recall. Go back to that command right there. And now let's just edit that command. So instead of minus 400, let's just add plus 600. So negative 16 t squared plus 803 t plus 600 comma t and if I enter that um, I will get negative 0.73 and 50.92 okay so let's go back and look at our drawing um, what's that negative 0.7 was it 0.7 where do you think that is negative 0.73 seconds where do you think that is on this drawing That's right here, okay? So if mathematically, if I drew the parabola, I'm not starting at the ground. I'm starting 600 feet. So the mathematical parabola is going to have two x-intercepts. This one doesn't make sense physically in the context of the problem to say that it hit the ground 0.7 seconds ago. The one that makes sense is it hit the ground, what? 50.92. So that means it's in the air for 50.92 seconds. So... 50.92 seconds. So at its basis, I had a parabola. I ask you to find its x-intercepts, set it equal to zero. I ask you to find where it was equal to 5,000. Now, what if I ask you, what's the maximum height of this object? What am I asking for there? The vertex. How would you find the vertex of this? It's negative 803 over 2 times negative 16. That is the what coordinate of the vertex? The x coordinate of the vertex. That would tell you how long until it gets to its maximum height. If you knew the x coordinate of the vertex, how would you find the y coordinate of the vertex? You just plug that back in. So these are the only kinds of questions I'm asking about these problems. You know, what's the maximum? That says find the vertex. Where does it equal 0? That's the x-intercept. That's solving the quadratic equation. Okay, so other than the fact that the equation is sort of a new equation, we're still doing the same things with all of these models. Okay, um, let's look at another example. Joshua drops a rock into a well in which the water surface is 300 feet below the ground. How long does it take for the rock to hit the water surface? Okay, so let's draw this out. Where am I starting out? What's my height when I start out? Yeah, so if I, you have a couple ways of doing this. So here's Joshua. He's up here. You've got Joshua right here, okay? Joshua is on the ground, okay? So we consider his height to be zero. But he's dropping the rock where? 300. So if that rock, if it falls down here, what is this height? Not 300. 300 is up here. If this is zero, it's negative 300, okay? So you have to sort of get that in the problem. Now, so I'm standing at ground level. I drop a rock and it falls 300 feet below the ground. So that's where that, uh, the initial height is zero. The final height is negative 300. Now, there's another way you could do this. You could say that if I call this 300, what would I call this one? Zero. You could do it that way. It does not matter. Okay. You're going to get the same answer. Your equation will look a little bit different but you'll get the same thing, okay? So if you call Joshua, if Joshua is at the height zero, 
the rock is going to be at height negative 300. And if Joshua, if I say that he's at 300, then it's going to end up at zero. Either way, this problem will work out for you. Okay? So let's draw out, or let's write the equation. So the equation is h of t is equal to minus one half gt squared plus v zero t plus h zero. Which of these do you want to use? The one on the left or the right? The okay. I like this one. It makes more physical sense to say Joshua is height zero. The well below the ground is negative three hundred height. So what is g? Now g is thirty two. Okay. Well, negative 16 is the whole term, okay? Um, what's the initial velocity? Zero. I'm dropping this rock. I'm not throwing it. I'm not giving it any force. So it's falling into the well. What's the initial height? Zero, okay? So this equation is h of t equal minus one-half times 32 times t squared plus 0 plus 0. So that means that h of t is minus 16 t squared. Okay. So that's an easier quadratic equation, right? Negative 16 t squared. So that's my model. How long does it take for the rock to hit the water surface, okay? So what do I know when the rock hits the surface of the water? What do I know at that point? I know my height is negative 300. So I want to say the height equal negative 300. That's what happens. That's what happens when it hits the water. So when it hits the water, the height is negative 300. So I'm going to say negative 16 t squared equal negative 300. Now this one you can you can do this one pretty much without the quadratic on your calculator. You know I could just say that you know, t squared equal negative 300 over negative 16, and that is going to be what 150 over 8, 75 over 4, I think. I can just take the square root of that number. So t is equal to square root of 75 over 4. Or, as long as you got your calculator, let's get its use. Um, I don't like to solve things equal to 300. I like them to be equal to what? 16t yeah, squared plus 300 equals 0. Let's go to our calculator. Let's solve negative 16t squared plus 300 equals 0. So that will be menu, algebra, polynomial. So negative 16t squared plus 300. Solve that for t. And I get this. Uh, negative 4.33 and 4.33. So in the context of my problem, this rock will hit the water negative 4.3 seconds from now or 4.33 seconds from now. Which one makes sense? Yeah, 4.33. So it's 4.33 seconds until the rock hits the water. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, pretty straightforward, right? You know, so I mean, you, just, you want to be slow and methodical in setting it up. You want to double check those numbers that are going into the calculator. Make sure you can get those numbers repetitively because one of the hard things about grading this is like, if you are if you came up with the answer six, how do I know what you did, you know? So it, it's hard to give partial credit for this. But again, we're doing the same things over and over. We're solving a quadratic. We're finding a vertex. Okay. So let's look at the next guy. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So a ball is thrown straight up from the ground with an initial velocity of 14 meters per second. So I'm no longer in feet per second. I'm in meters per second. 
Find the maximum height attained by the ball and the time it takes for the ball to return to the ground. Okay, so same equation that we've been working with. H of t is equal to minus one half gt squared plus my initial velocity times time plus my initial height. And now let's figure out what all these variables are. G in this case is what? 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. And that's just the constant you're given. On the test, you'll be given those numbers. You'll need to know the equation. Okay. What is the initial velocity here? Yeah, the initial velocity is 14 meters per second. And the initial height is what? Is zero. Because I start off on the ground. Okay. Initial height is zero. So when I write this equation, it's h of t equal minus one half times nine point eight t squared plus fourteen t. And then the height is zero. So this is h of t equal minus four point nine t squared plus 14t. Now I did not draw the diagram. This one I think it's self-explanatory. The ball is on the ground. What does the ball do? It goes up, it comes down. So not a whole lot of excitement in, uh, in that model. But I do know it starts at zero. Now what did they ask me to find? What's the question? What is it? Well, they didn't say vertex. What did they say? Maximum height. So to find the maximum height, if I look at my equation, that's the maximum height. Mathematically, that's the what? The vertex. So in cryptic, not so many words, they're saying go find the vertex of that parabola. Okay, so that's what we need to do. We need to find the vertex of that parabola. So I've got ht is what? Negative 4.9 t squared plus 14t. My job is to find the vertex. This is in what form? Standard form. So the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative 14 over 2 times negative 4.9. Okay. That's going to give me the x-coordinate of the vertex. So you can do that in your head or you can come over here and say negative 14 divided by 2 times 4.9 equal negative. No, um, I made a mistake. It's negative 14 and there's a negative and a negative. So it's going to be positive. Let's just go back. Negative 14 over 2 times, and that's going to be a negative 4.9. So all it does is change 1.42. So 1.42, we'll call it 1.429. We'll just say that. So that's the t or the x value of the vertex. So that means right here, if you go over 1.429, that's how long it takes to get to the vertex. How do I? So that's the x coordinate of the vertex. How do I find the y coordinate of the vertex? Plug this back in. So I need to find h of 1.429. That's going to be negative 4.9 times 1.429 squared plus 14 times 1.429. So negative 4.9, 1.429 squared plus 14 times 1.429. The job for the TI Inspire. So negative 4.9 times 1.429 squared plus 
14 times 1.429 equals 10. What does that mean? That's what? That's the height of the ball. So it tells me that um, the maximum height. So what do they ask again? They ask what? Yeah. Find the maximum height of the ball and the time it takes to return to the ground. So we've found the maximum height. So the maximum height, my maximum height is 10 meters. Now, if I ask how long it took to get there, how long did it take to get there? in 1.429 seconds, okay? I did not ask that, but that's a common question in these problems. What's the maximum height? How long did it take to get there? It took 1.429 seconds to get to 10 meters, okay? What's the next question? Come on guys, what? How long does it take for the ball to return to the ground? So ball goes up, ball comes down, what do we know about the moment it hits the ground? The height is zero. Okay, so for when it hits the ground, so the ball will hit the ground at the height of zero. So what do I do with that information? I set the equation equal to zero. Okay, so it's negative 4.9 t squared plus 14t equals zero. So there are a couple ways of doing that. I can come over here. So menu, algebra, polynomial, complex roots, negative uh, 4.9t squared plus 14t and then comma t. What this equation, what this function does is it's finding the roots. It's setting this equal to zero. So it's saying negative 4.9 t squared plus 14 t. It's setting that equal to zero for you. It brings you back an answer, which is what? 2.857. So what does that mean? Yeah, so the ball hits the ground. So it's it's in the air. Or two point, what was that number? Eight five seven. So two point eight five seven seconds. Now, let's look at our drawing. I started out time zero. How long did it take to get to the maximum height? One point four two, and then it took what to reach the ground? 2.857, do those numbers look, what do you think? Similar, but what else do you see? Right, it's, it's about half and half, so, and it should be, according to the model. If something goes up and something comes down, that should be the same amount of time. So halfway through its trajectory, it's at its peak. And then, so if you double 1.429, you should get the 2.857. So anyway, that's thrown in there for free. Um, and I think we have one more here to work. So take a look at this one. A coin is tossed upward from a balcony 166 feet high with an initial velocity of 16 feet per second. During what time interval would the coin be a height of at least 70 feet? So in some cases like this, I prefer to start with the drawing, okay? So I'm starting over here on a balcony. How tall is the balcony? It's, oh, it's 160, uh, 166, so 166, that's where I'm starting. I'm on the balcony, so the coin is going to go up and the coin is going to come down, okay? What am I interested in finding? When is at least 70 feet, right? So where is 70? Yeah, it's somewhere down here, okay? So how many times do I expect this coin to be at 70? Yeah, it's it's already starting above 70. It's only going to hit 70 one time. So I'm looking for what amount of time 
from here to here. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So the height, I'm going to set the height equal to what? 70 and solve it. So our equation is H Okay, what is going on here? Okay, I can't figure out what's going on here. Does anyone know what I'm doing? I know it's like it's like this is selected. Let's just see if I can. It's like it's not taking anything. Okay, let's try now and see. It's because I'm recording. That's what it's doing. So let's uh let's just start it over. Okay, I'm not sure. Try this. Okay, let's go ahead and stop the.